art has definitely been in Boston for sure um, and I love it, it here in New York as well so it's been and I haven't chosen the easiest of major marathons to go up against I've chosen some really ridiculously hard fields I mean Mary Katani and Enda Kipaga are two of the best marathoners in the world in the last seven years so you know that's it's really challenging to say oh I'm gonna try to run with them um, but to me the perfect ending is, is having just some type of one last really good feel good moment you know like whatever it is you know in, in everyone's career it's like it's always what keeps us coming back and working hard is you know we have these one really great race where we just it, that feeling and that of sense of accomplishment can last years and I just want that one last really proud moment for myself and feel good moment that can sustain me for a few years at least and just and just make myself proud of what I've done and that I didn't stop too soon um, just because I, I couldn't accomplish everything I wanted. I just, but I'm chasing that one last really feel good moment for me. So it's not necessarily about like, oh, I think I've sort of hit my limit of how many miles like. No, because honestly, I, I physically I feel really good. I really do. I, I really take care of myself. I, I do all the little things so that I could have a long career and I'll probably end up stopping it a few years shorter than I, I could keep going. So I'm in a really, really fortunate position because a lot of times injuries decide retirement but like Med he's getting to decide on his terms it's always nice as an athlete to decide on your terms and so um, I'll probably end up leaving a few marathons that I could have run out there but um, I think there's there's definitely more things that I'm excited about in my life um, that can contribute to the running worlds and other capacities so and you mentioned um, and part of your strategy is like if you're too close to Mary like that could be annoying to her is there anything in a race that like annoys you yeah, when people are like really close and you have a whole road and people are right there on you. So I find that annoying. Do you tell them to like off? Well, I'll just like, be like, we need some space. Like if someone is in danger of like taking my shoe off or clipping my shoe, like that would be terrible. Like, you know, to lose a shoe because someone is running too close to you or um, when sometimes some of the women are a little bit sloppy upon, you know, getting rid of their water bottles and they throw it down at your feet instead of like far away from you. I find that to be a little disrespectful. <laughs> you were talking about how you've chosen not necessarily easy courses. But you've run really fast times on not necessarily easy courses. So why why do you are you, do you gravitate toward the New Yorks and the Boston and the Berlin? Yeah, I think some people are motivated by times, and some people are motivated by the opportunity to be like crowned the New York City champion. And um, to me, the track is about fast times. When you go to the roads, yes, it's super fun to run fast. Don't get me wrong, I love it. But to me, it's like, what are, in my mind, I remember like, who was the Boston Marathon champion? Like, I, in my mind, that's what resonates with me. Times are nice if you're like the world record holder. But beyond that, I'm like, yeah, I don't really care. It's who won. I love the head to head competition. I think what gets me motivated to go out and train every day is thinking about, trying to beat these incredible women, like that motivates me, not a particular time, so. So there's a lot of fanfare around Meb's final race. Are we missing something here? Is this an Australian's final race? No, well, yeah, we were talking about that earlier. It's my dream scenario to exit the sport would to be having a major win. Um, you know, a lot of people would be like, well, if you have a major win, that means like you could capitalize on that moment and keep going. Um, but to me, I've, I've Feel like I've done almost everything that I want to do. I have some unfinished business, I'd say, probably in terms of times in the half marathon and the marathon. I could run much faster. I know that in my heart. Um, but I'm chasing, you know, being like Meb and like Dina and having the win, having that title. And um, so if I were in that unbelievable position of winning on Sunday, um, that possibly would be my last. Yeah. Yeah, you know how hard those wins are to get, obviously. Yeah. Like if you, is there a moment that you could finish the race, like in this one or a future one, and you would be, what would you be satisfied with saying, like, okay, maybe I didn't wait and I walked away, or is it would it only take a major win for you to say um, a major? Yeah. Do that, that's like what I'm chasing. For that's what's important to me, and um, yeah. Jerry has said that he thinks you put one foot in front of the other until you dropped it again. Because he thought that might happen in L.A. Uh, uh, yeah. Where do you get that mentality? Because um, you did. Cause I, I was at the 25 yeah. and three-quarter mile in L.A. And I yeah. 
I don't know. I think I probably just had tough parents and taught me like just values that you just you work hard and you don't quit. Yeah, and you just, you know, everyone can have a bad day, but if you can, you keep going. And and um, there's certainly something to be said about finishing things. And um, But, yeah, I think probably that comes from just my parents teaching teaching me that it's important to be, to be tough. <laughs> Are the twins going to be here? What? Are the twins going to be here? They're not. They're in schools right now. So, um, yes, no, they won't be here. How does your fitness right now compared to previous marathons? Um, this is the best buildup I've ever had, so I'm very excited by it. Yeah. Do you, obviously, women you're facing very good. It'll be tough to beat them. Do you have any strategy in mind or way you're approaching the race? Um, yeah, it's in here. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Can you share anything about that? Or is that just, we have to wait? Um, I mean, I kind of alluded. Um, Mary is, uh, I think a lot of women look to Mary because she has the accolades and the experience on this course. So um, I think she's the alpha in the race and will, will likely be dictating a lot of the strategy. Right. So. Do you feel like you need how to make a mistake for you in order to win or do you feel like if you run, like if you run your best race, what do you think? Um, I just don't know how her buildup has gone and, you know, um, I know I'm I'm really do I'm doing really well. Um, am I in two seventeen shape? No, but am I in really good shape? Yes. So, you know, I don't know I don't know what that means. I don't know what shape she's in, but if I'm in the best shape I've ever been and she's just in okay Mary shape, maybe we match up. I don't know. But if she's in two seventeen shape, yeah, I won't be I won't be there. Do you so. think the fact that she's focusing on setting a world record in London next spring? I See, I didn't know that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I mean, as athletes, you have to be calculated how you spend your energy. And so, I don't know. She may think, well, you know, I've got this in the bag. I don't know. I mean, she's got Edna for, that she's very much aware of. Um, and some of the Ethiopian women who are obviously very accomplished. So, um, yeah, I don't know how she's approached this buildup. She could be a little bit more laid back than typical. I have no idea. Or she may use it as a building block to launch her towards her another world record attempt. I don't know. So all I know is I haven't run a marathon in over a year, and I'm very, very excited to get going because I, I've very much been under, under trained and under raced um, as a result. And so I've got a lot, a lot of energy to give. Um, you do this build up mostly alone. Is, is Betsy Sai still part of Bowerman? Like, she's running yeah. it as well, and she sort of went to Kenya for that. Um, no, she's not part of Bowerman. She did. She moved back to Kenya, and she's working with Patrick Sang. Okay. So, yes, yeah. Has the lack of time, like, is that going that you've had? You know, it's been over a year. Is it going to be harder to control yourself right off the gate? If you're talking about being excited. Uh, no. I mean, I also know that it's a long, a long race, and um, I, and I. I want to be smart as well. I'm, I'm talking like as if uh, it's going to be aggressive, I think, because of Mary. I don't think I'll be the aggressor. So, um, no, I'm very excited to just be able to showcase, hopefully, and honor my my fitness and the work that I've put in. So, yeah. I like the winning talk, but for whatever reason, I'm drawn to the suffering. Yeah. <laughs> but what do you tell yourself in those moments when, when you're at whatever that point might be? What goes through your head then? Yeah, everyone has different tactics of how they get through those tough patches, and sometimes you think in advance, okay, if it gets tough, this is what I'm going to think about, and then sometimes you completely throw that out and you think about something else. But um, I found that when I'm in those really tough moments, I try to think back to my training and I think back to all the people who helped me be able to just be right here, right now, and. You know, I have a huge support system. Every single athlete that enters this room has a huge support system that helps them get there. And so I'm just trying to honor their efforts and my efforts and all the dedication that we put towards this one performance. There's a lot of time and effort on a lot of people's parts. And so I think about them because in that moment, I don't care about me necessarily. I, I'm very much motivated. Like, well, I want to make my coach proud. I want to make my husband proud. I want to make the people who've helped me proud. So that, for me, is the only way I can get through those really tough patches is, is hopefully just knowing, like, I gotta honor the fact that they they gave so much time to me, so I better do a good job. <laughs>